Hello, welcome back to myself playing Disco Elysium. We are currently still investigating the murder, which is the main story. We're looking to who is smuggling drugs at this point. And this is our next witness, maybe suspect to talk to. Everything still cool here, officer. So ceiling, what's your stance on drugs? drugs? I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. For a moment, he was unsure how to respond. Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, drugs are excellent. Tasty, tasty drugs. We're looking for a lorry driver who's transporting drugs at the harbour. He or she is in this traffic jam. That's so cool! You investigating the local drug trade like some cool narc? But I am not a lorry driver. I am just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. A blatant lie, sire. Yet he tells it with such conviction. We'd believe him if we didn't know better. But you are a lorry man. Another driver has identified you and your lorry. Who said that? It's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. <coughs> I'm not against him because I know <coughs> who works harder than he oh. does. He's a hater. So you admit you're a lorry driver? No, I just said I work harder, and he's an asshole. I'm. He stops to think, realizing he can't get out of it. So... Okay. Maybe I'm a lorry driver too, a little, but that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. So you forgot to tell me? Exactly. It's such a small part of my life. It's in the rear view mirror now. I'm climbing out of that hole with ingenuity. Stop screaming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Nothing. I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know, the drug crowd. No, he wasn't talking about an abstract crowd. It was that crowd. Well, there wasn't some drug crowd. You know who they are. Tell me now. Shush, please. There's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please. Don't get me into this mess. I spent 15 years working my way up. Here we go. There's a tiny bit of truth on the table. Zoom in on it. We're buddy ceiling. Help us out. No one will know it was you. It's a she, okay? <coughs> Call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her, she's no lady. Interesting. Could this driver be connected to the Hardy Boys? Who are these other drivers who talk? All of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other one with the tattoos? All of them. Even the ones who've left. I don't hang out with them. I don't remember who has tattoos. Is this nature of the old one back there? Point to the pale rider. Driver. There is that stranger. I don't know. Maybe. If she is, I haven't gone near her. I don't get involved. I told you. He's not ruling her out. Could she be associated with the Hardy Boys? I don't know. I'm not local. I don't know anything about that. Okay, we're cool now. Conclude. All right. I scored. Let's get this off with the purchase. You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses, detective. Both of you. You deserve it. Are you, are you for it? <laughs> you keep coming back. That's good, officer. Keep your hands deep in tattered and fake. The box smells like cat piss or like an old person with no money. Economical, but also. Yeah. 
shine on these sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. The shine on these sunglasses. These are all boring. Those UV stickers are almost certainly just there on the show. If anything, these lenses probably direct more UV light into your pupils. A UV magnifier. These are all first rate sunglasses. Premium design. Okay. Let's check with the two gents first, so they know about the lady lorry drivers. Still here, stuck in this damn jam, I'm in. What's up? I heard one of the drivers is a woman, but I don't think she's here. Do you know this lady driver? I don't want to talk about that. He shifts around, suddenly at gospel, looks away. Why? Do you know something? What is it? Man, I was hoping it isn't going to be her. All I can say is, she isn't around here anymore. She isn't some evil drug trafficker. And I don't know where she is. Who is this person? What's her name? Thank God I don't know. People here call her the Lady Driver. She kept her name a secret. From me too. Now I see why. <clears throat> Who is she to you? A friend? An acquaintance? I don't know. She was the only person in this mm. damn jam I could talk to. She's someone I don't want to rat out to the law, okay? What's she look like? A youngish woman. Gruff, but in a cool way. What could our hand? Blue and violet. Died. It was violet when she got here. Blue before she went. Then she may have died it again. I asked you who was conducting drug trade and you said that no, now you're saying you do? I didn't, man. I told you I was hoping it's not her. That she wouldn't be mixed up in it. It's true. You would have caught a lie. But a kind heart is tricky. Bah. Emotional rhetoric. He knew something and he didn't share it with you. That's a fact. When did she leave? Damn, I don't want to... Let's just let it go. Whatever she did, it can't be that bad. She's not a bad person. I know that much. We can't just let it go. It's part of a police investigation. That's how it always is with you, isn't it? All part of the investigation. The girl's trouble. If you hunt her down, she may not survive. I can't have that on my conscience. It won't come to that. We won't pursue her on this. This is information only. I don't believe you. Believe us, it really is. I just can't, man. I'm not naive. You said she's troubled. Ow. She's got the darkness in her. That young person's darkness when you think it's all over. And you're looking for a way out. She shared this with you? Yes. Which is why I don't want to snitch on her. It's not stitch, snitching, it's just a few questions. It's snitching, man. I know what it is. I was told everybody was afraid of her. You're not? I heard the rumors. I saw the other drivers looking at me strange when we talked. And she told me, too, that she's had a violent life. But I wasn't afraid of her. More like for her. Did this violent life include drug trafficking? Well, it looks like it did now. But we didn't talk about that. We talked about life, you know? She talked about her mind. Hold on, her mind? The way it worked. The trouble it was giving her. The pain it was causing her. Well, when she left, did she leave her lorry behind? Fuck, man. Go grow someone else with these questions, okay? There are plenty of drivers here who couldn't stand her, or were afraid of her. They'd be more than happy to rat her out. He's right. There are other options. A race man for her. Mmm. The grey-haired woman. Maybe she knows something. Wait. This guy says they're friends. Then, acquaintances. And he's okay with others ratting her out. So 
so you're all right with others ratting her out. You just don't want your hands dirty. Fine. I don't want to be a butcher. And I don't want to be a knight either. I just want to be a person who can sleep at night. A little fame wouldn't hurt too. Put yourself in my shoes. I need this for another investigation too. It's important and I can't blow it. You're not going to put a bullet in your head if you blow it, are you? Because she's on the edge, man. I wouldn't be so sure, Tommy. Fine, I'll drop matter for now. Find another way. Thank you, friend. <sighs> wow, all... this makes me feel like I should pick up smoking again. Would help with my rhymes, too. That's all for now. Bye. Looking for something mm -hmm. odd? Come to tell me to fuck off again? I know you mean give me the run around. Fess up with the lady driver. I don't know what you're talking about. First, you knew Sinning didn't do it. He did something. He stole his employer's goods and another lorry man's job. You should be thankful for the tip. He grins a wide smile. He's been expecting this. He's really puffed himself up. Then why are you smirking? Listen up, fuckwits. You don't scare me. You cops don't run Revachel West. You don't run Martinez. You don't run anything. Actually, we do. No, he means la puta madre. A legendary, and not in a good way, crime boss from Jamrock controls what is probably the most powerful organized crime outfit in Revachol West. Looks like the lieutenant has a plan. Let him do this. Yeah, him. Cross your arms and nod. Then I presume you are familiar with his peonies. Yeah, they're his little bitches. He's got them all over the unions. Not just the unions. He has peonies everywhere. Some say he even has them in the RCM. Dirty fucking peonies who do anything for him. Multi ethnic drug addicts. The lieutenant adopts a rodentine quality. Be cool, sire. He's getting into this. Say nothing. You're not peonies. You wouldn't be investigating a drug thing if you were. No, of course not. We are not peonies. But if we were, and one of Madre's drivers were to be stealing from him, then it's a good peony's job to find out who that is. He's surprisingly good at this. Not bad at all. Look at him lurch. It's not a hard job. It won't take a long time. It won't make Padre Madre angry. But a stupid fucking racist is standing in the way, protecting this fucking thief. I'm not scared of you or the mob. I'm under the protection of the Lorimen and Carter's guild. You've seen that corpse in the ceramic armor there. Did his shitty little guild protect him? Nah, you wouldn't just leave him out there if you... He tries to light a fresh cigarette, but his hands are shaking now. The sentence simply ends. The lieutenant turns and gives you a barely perceptible nod. I've softened him up as best I could. Now it's on you to finish the job. Be careful. This man still got some fight in him by the looks of it. It won't be easy to break him. The main thing is to not overdo it, even when you're trying to scare someone. The most important thing is, how does it look on your resume? So why don't you and me step outside for a little talk? What? What do you think we're doing right now, runt? We're outside talking. Damn it, I mean... Do you not want to find some place private to no shit? There's some kind of homo thing. <laughs> no, no, it's not just tell me what you want. Tell me what you know. Make me grunt. 
He blows the smoke from right in front of your face. Let's just go and ask Tony, all right? We are wasting our time here. Okay, first things first. Wasteland of reality. Congrats, you're sober. It will take a while for your body to remember how to metabolize anything that isn't sugar from alcohol. So, you're going to be pretty ravenous soon. Eat plenty. You can expect your coordination and balance to improve in a couple of weeks. In two months, you might start sleeping like a normal person. Full recovery will take years though. It'll be depressing. And it'll be boring. Don't expect any further rewards or hand claps. This is how normal people are all the time. Wow. You're second out of something on to tell me to fuck off again. There we go, let's try this again. There you me to fuck off again? Men like this only respect two things. Strength and fear. Time to turn up the volume. Show me for uh, Show me for lorry right fucking now. The lady drives lorry. Where is it? Fuck you. I told you. I'm not gonna... There. His voice grows smaller mm. as yours. I'm gonna put you in a cell for giant kip. You're gonna be bleeding kip dick. You hear me? Look, fuck you, man. It's some lorry down there. Green banged up thing. I don't fucking know who she is. When did she go away? I don't know. I don't even know her <coughs> name. She just rules with the fleet and acts like a big shot, some dyke, probably. I haven't even seen her for days. Now it's not a big deal for him anymore. This is how he saves face. Where exactly is her lorry? Past the monument, down there. The Green Temple. Now leave me the fuck alone, okay? A small temple by the monument. Green. Let's get into that lorry. Right, I'm going. This is the one. This green found A to Z contemporary is parked in the shadow of the ruins looming overhead. It's seen better days. This must be the one he told us about, unless he was lying. The lieutenant peeks inside, tried to peek in the window. The glass on the side windows is tinted and covered with dust. You can barely make out the shape of a seat and two steering levers. Try the door handle. The door is locked. The handle looks shiny, like it's recently replaced. There's no pick in this one. The owner has put special <coughs> care into it. It's an assist design. How are we going to get this open, Kim? Use the pry bar to smash the window. Open it from the inside. Really? This has been hard enough. No need to make it any harder. Pry bar in hand. You take a hard swing at the window. A loud thunk rings out and the pry bar bounces back, leaving a tiny spider web on the glass. Goddamn maggot. Drag your ass to the gym and do some reps right now. Looks like the window might be shatterproof. You may have to rethink your approach. I'm sorry it didn't happen. Was it really? 
hit again. A futile thunk sounds in the brisk coastal air. This has been hard enough. No need to make it any harder. The lieutenant takes the pry bar from you, gestures for you to step back. Then, with a short warning, he smashes it into the window. Droplets of glass fly everywhere, shattering over the lorry floor and pavement. You can just reach in now. Just open the door from the, the inside. Of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. Oh my, the posters. These are movie posters featuring starlets from long forgotten films from the 20s, the teens, even the 90s of the last century. One of them particularly catches your eye, a centerfold of an ingenue attached right above the back seat. There's definitely perfume in the air. It's spicy with a hint of amberette wafting through the bitter air of the cabin. Stop and wonder, what's that smell? The remnants of a sweet juniper scented perfume, probably Grenade number five. Study the centerfold. The actress is draped in a sheath dress, one of her shoulders bared. The faded remains of an autograph run across the poster. She's looking past the camera. This is Tip Tijon, a starlet from the dawn of cinematography, less known for her talent than her tragic, untimely death. She wasted away in a drug den called The Door to the River, not far from there on Boogie Street, a mixture of cocaine and morphine. She was afraid of the world and the camera too. Enough the posters. The actresses and the rear actor all smile you a warm goodbye. A radio transmitter is attached to the dashboard and a toolbox sits under the driver's seat. Check the pedals. You wedge yourself under the steering wheel to get a better look. Seems like the few tools lying around here, a hammer, a pair of pliers, a rusty wrench have been casually thrown there by the disorganized driver. But one odd detail does catch your eye. A piece of sandpaper has been glued to the throttle. Sandpaper adds extra grip. Looks like the driver has glued a piece of sandpaper to the throttle to offer some extra grip. Sandpaper? Another technique? The sandpaper would also rub off the pattern from the driver's right sole. Yes. He likes where this was going. Do the honours, he thinks. Connect it to yourself. One of the footprints at the crime scene had an aberration. One sole was smoother than the others. Which means that the missing lady driver was present at the lynching. The little eyes light up behind the prescription lens. <laughs> Wait, the mate. Mission 8th Hardy here? Looks like her, yes. And she's also the one running the drug trade? Or a handful? Now we know for certain who is the missing 8th person at the lynching. Do you think that Hardy and his boys could also be involved in the drug operation? Uh, not necessarily the lady driver could have kept the drug trade a secret. You're right. But we should still go and see what Titus has got to say on the matter. Are we finished with the learning? He writes it down in his little notebook. The movie stars are still smiling from the walls. The radio transmitter sits on the center console and a faint smell of perfume is in the air. Pull out the pull-out toolbox. The metallic drawer slides out from the seat. It's empty, except for a folded newspaper. Unfold the newspaper. It's an issue of Petty Ferry. From last Wednesday, a piece of paper falls out from its pages. Pick up the notes. It looks like an article ripped out from a radio enthusiast magazine. Complex mathematical equations explain the basics of something called the ULAN frequency system. These formulas look oddly painful. Maybe it's the handle, but they give you a headache. The ULAN frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... The torch fell off, pushing the pull-up toolbox. The pull-up toolbox slides back into its nest. 
The rest is as it was. Radio, posters, a trace of motor oil smell under all the cigarettes. Examine the radio. Looks like the frequency dial is absent. It requires a key to work, but the key has been removed. Likely by the missing lady driver. Strange. There are so many radio stations saved here. Must be over 100 at least. It has to be an advanced model to fit so many frequencies next to each other without blending them together. Is there anything we can do with radio? Uh, doesn't look like it. It's completely inoperable without the dial key. Why would anyone need so many radio stations? For contacting an entire fleet of lorrymen, for example. This is all shortwave, UW and UKV. Looks like we are dealing with an impressive organizational tool. The nerve center of a huge operation. With quite a range. A 20 kilometer radius at least. Perhaps extended by an attachable antenna that's not here right now. What about Speed Freaks FM? Is that one? Is it one of the safe stations here? No, that's on 78.9. He's comfortable <laughs> Raise your eyebrows. What? I happen to have committed the frequency to memory. I have no problem admitting that. What else is here? The smell of a thousand cigarettes, some dead actresses, and a rusty <sighs> old toolbox under the seat. Is it a little bit changes over time? Close the door. I close the rusty old lorry door. Wait. <sighs> I think we got everything. A wonderful detective? Before we return to Joyce? All right, we finished here. Let's quickly debrief and go over what we found, so we don't do it in front of the company record. Seems like something police would do. What do you think of all this, Kim? Honestly, I'm quite worried by what we've seen so far. The evidence seems to point to a rather extensive and well-organized operation. I'm especially intrigued by that radio transmitter, particularly the sheer number of stations it can connect. Looks like this alleged drug trade casts a wide net. This means it's well funded. Technology like that, a major player must be financing it. I'm not sure what the UN frequencies are all about, but they may hold some significance. Perhaps it's a better way to connect between fleets while avoiding frequency bleed, or maybe it's used to tap into RCM networks. Listening in on your calls between you and your station, a worrying prospect. And last but not least, it looks like the Hardy Boys knew this driver, as we know that she was present at the Lynchy. This may be the union connection we've been searching for. The probe and the case converged, he thinks. This was quite the find. What about the movie posters? How do they factor into all of this? As elegant as they are, I don't think they are relevant to the drug trade. A lot of women there, especially in the lady driver's cab. Yes, well. If he doesn't say more. Important. So it turns out this is is connected to the union. Like Joyce told us, yes, logistically. But don't expect to bust this open during our stay here. At best, this is an angle we can use against them to other ends as extra ammunition. Meaning, someone as slippery as Everard won't be caught by a couple of cops and some stuff they found in some cabin. Will the RMC open an investigation into this? We should return to the murder case, see what Joyce tells us about the lynching. When we are done for the day, I call my station and suggest our narcotics department look into it. There are more than enough grounds to start an official investigation sometime later when we're done here. We do not want to get caught in that. He stops to think, what are you thinking? The fact that one hasn't started already gives me pause. An investigation, especially if the Madre grouping is involved and we can't imagine they aren't. It's certainly worrisome. All the same, I don't like the idea of internal affairs descending on the matter. That won't help anyone either. <coughs> Okay, debrief over. Debrief over. After you. Okay. Go back to Joyce. Or confront. Mm. 
Here we come, Joyce. I uh, saw you poking around in Lady Driver's lorry. She in trouble? <sighs> The rest of the is where her cabin is, but we've only searched it. Still better than me, I guess. Told you there's plenty of others who tell on her. But is she in trouble? No trouble. She's gonna be fine. Oh man, that's like a load off my mind. All that stress was messing up my rise. He chooses to believe what's best for her. What's the plan with those rhymes anyway? Oh, you know. Tommy Leham's gonna be a musician. Shrekgesang, but with beats. I've got a lot of free time on the road to hone my craft. The correct grammar is Tommy Leham. Why Tommy Leham? Tommy Leham was taken. My real name's Jerry Lafitte. Tommy's way better. Oh, I had no question actually. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Okay, let's try this one. Your best verse. You don't even have a bad verse in here. Just tumbleweed and liquor stains. Wait, no. What are you doing? <laughs> she broke me. She fucking broke me. That's brutal, man. But you know. Time will... No, stop. He's already mortified. No, Tommy, these are my rhymes. Listen, she fucked me till I bled. That's, um... In the name of God, what are you doing? I will never be the same again. She's always there. Fuck the case, fuck everything. Total doom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get it. These are your rhymes. They're from your life. Doesn't matter if they're robust, they're honest. So, thanks, man. He's not lying. He liked the end. Yes, and I also thank you for stopping. We have a drug investigation to return to. How about we do that? Like your emotional poetry. Let's give it a try. Ease into it. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. Nah, my man, I want to know about yourself. Cool, cool. We all want to know each other. We know each other's woes. You know. But people, man, they have slippery souls. Just like that, he slips out of your reach. It is possible the yelling didn't help. That's all for now. Bye. <laughs> Okay, well, we're going to end this recording here and go and speak to Joyce in a bit, as usual. If you've watched this, thank you very much, and I'll catch you guys again later. Bye.